Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. I will be reviewing the Netflix original miniseries, Altered Carbon, episode one, titled Out of the Path. But before I get into the review, if you are enjoying the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notification. And if you have not seen this Netflix original miniseries, consider this your spoiler warning. Now on to the review. All in all, I thought it was okay. I wasn't like jaw dropped. I wasn't too impressed with the first episode and like most first episodes of something that you haven't seen there's always that introduction phase so when i watch this and i review this i took that into account hence why i gave it an okay rating i haven't gone forward on it i'm, I'm just strictly watching them and as soon as i watch an episode i i'm gonna post a review so just basing this on this one episode not the overall series as a whole I thought it was okay. Uh, there was, a, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm not familiar with the book that this is based on, so I'm going into it with a clean slate, if you will. So the story of this miniseries, at least from what I got, was that the main character has been on ice, and they call him like a terrorist, and I guess he's like a rebel, or he's fighting a, a cause, I guess but he's been in uh, on ice basically for 250 years and then they 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 now revive him because someone needs his help and that part I'm okay with the part that bothered me is that for someone that's been on ice for 250 years he takes it in stride like he, nothing bothers him he he's familiar with the basics of what's going on my first thought was would the technology not evolve what's going on like is humanity in a standstill in the last 250 years nothing has changed and we're already in a futuristic kind of world when you're introduced into this mini series as far as for, you know for this show it's some time in the future where humanity has colonized galaxies and worlds so that's the the environment that we're in so it was hard for me to understand how he was just okay with being re revived after 250 years and he, his mind wasn't blown he wasn't in a state of shock he again he just took it in stride and that that kind of bothered me because n my mind is too lot it goes into logic i did the math and i was like well you know we're in 2021 and if if i'm doing the equivalent is is like i'm taking someone from 1771 and reviving him or her 2021 i would think that person's mind would be blown he would have such a he or she would have such a tough time just getting comfortable using the the modern technology that we have being able just to function let alone just move about i think it would take like a at least a good six months of you know first calming them down and getting them used to to life in 2021 and that part got me that's what made me detach a little bit from what i was watching and i was trying to make sense of the of the whole thing but it's a minor detail like i said it's the first episode so I, I give that a pass as I go into more episodes. I'm hoping they click clean that up a little bit more or explain it to me a little bit more. So in the process of this, you know, show, there's like a, a magic vertebrae apparently that stores your memories. And that part also bothered me a little bit because I don't understand the technology as to how would a magic vertebrae that's installed in the middle of your neck control the memory function? Because it's not like at the base of the brain. 
it's not somewhere where you would think neurons of memory would travel to because everything in the spine is more or less like nerve endings. It's not necessarily storing the memories. But in this mini series, you have to, I, I'm assuming, disconnect from reality and just accept that. Maybe they'll explain it in later episodes and I'm being too critical of it. But when they were explaining it in that, when they, you know, as they defrosted the guy, the main character, they put him in this room with everyone else that's been defrosted and they explain it as like a exposition about what this little magic vertebrae does. But apparently, like I said, apparently it stores memories and that's how people can live forever basically and just go from body to body. So if I die today, they could put a, you know, take away this magic vertebrae out of me and put it in a another body but they call other bodies sleeves like it's just uh, a casing basically where it's not like a body so you could change bodies bodies over and over and over again and in theory you could be immortal as long as you follow the rules and can afford it apparently maybe or maybe it's just everyone because there was a scene where uh, i think a girl was killed but that magic vertebrae wasn't damaged so they give them i guess the government gives you a free a free sleeve as they say or body but they gave this seven-year-old girl that was killed i think she was seven uh they gave her this old woman's body so i guess it's pretty random unless you have the money to afford a body to your specifications but yeah, so in theory, you could live forever. I'm allowing my mind to separate and accept that just maybe again, they'll explain it as I go along. But those two things bothered me. The fact that he took the 250 years in stride and now and then there's apparently this magic vertebrae that could basically keep you immortal if you're lucky enough or rich enough but it could keep you immortal. And I'm like, what, is there a shortage of, of humans? Is that the reason that they have to keep on doing this thing? Because it seemed like the world was pretty full or pretty populated because there was like these futuristic cities, these ginormous skyscrapers that some go past the, the, the clouds. Very futuristic. And that was another part that was a little bit, I don't want to say unbelievable, because God knows we were probably moving in that direction. But it felt like, at least the visuals, it, it's like someone, they were in like a, a pitch meeting or an idea meeting and they asked, hey, what do you think a future civilization or a future world would look like? You know, what would it look, what would a world look like in like the year 3000 and whatever ideas they put out, they put it in this first episode. Some of the stuff was way too fantastical. And to be honest, it reminded me this first episode, at least reminded me of four different movies. It reminded me of Ready Player One, Total Recall, Austin Powers and John Wick. And if you've seen this miniseries, I'm, I, I, I'm sure you thought the same thing. The way the holograms and the, the people that live there, the just the environment, it felt very Ready Player One or Total Recall in some of the some of the shots, just some of the stuff that was going on. And the Austin Powers, when they defrost this, you know, the, the main character, I don't know how you couldn't connect that to when they defrost Austin Powers. It was almost similar, except when they defrost our character in this miniseries, he's just badass and stuff. And he just, he knocks down the people that opened the bag and, and try and, and brought them back to life. But I don't know how you could separate yourself. And the John Wick part was, you know, he goes into this hotel and he's talking to the, the bellman, I guess, but he's like a bellman slash bartender slash hitman. 
And these guys uh, find our hero or our main character in this hotel. And this hotel has guns and the, the bartender, the bellman has guns and they help them out. So it felt very John Wick for the first episode. Take it or leave it. I mean, but that's that's the, the, the what it felt like. But all in all, overall, I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. Once I once I, I felt my disbelief taking over, I had to remind myself, hey, this is a sci-fi miniseries, so you have to accept some things outright. And hopefully later on in the series, some of the stuff gets cleared up and a lot of the stuff that I'm watching now in the first episode will make sense so but it was entertaining entertaining what i recommended uh, to people we'll, we'll see right now like i said it's only episode one uh, i'll revisit that question in episode six or at the end of the first season i know i'm a little late to the party on this mini series has been out for i think three years now and from what i've read on it the third season was canceled so there's only two seasons for this uh, mini series but hopefully they didn't cancel it without answering some questions so we'll see we'll see how how, how it goes but first for the first episode I w it was okay and it was enjoyable so with that said like always that's a wrap